In this video, we're going to cover some of the new features that came out as part of Power BI September update. So without further ado, let's jump in. So the first one is probably the most requested feature in Power BI Desktop, which is dark mode. So when you load up Power BI Desktop in September for the first time, you'll be given a choice to choose the theme between light, dark, or automatic based on your system settings. And this changes all of the typical views that you work with in Power BI Desktop. So views like the report view, the model and the table view, the new DAX query view, as well as the Power Query Editor. So you don't need to suffer anymore from the bright UI that you have when you're working in Power BI Desktop. Just a note that it only affects the UI of Power BI Desktop. It doesn't affect your reports at all. So if you want a light or dark mode versions of your reports, you'll have to do those yourselves. Copilot summaries will now do full report summaries by default. So previously you'd have to use another option based summary on the entire reports, which uh, will do your analysis based on all the pages that you have in your report. But now with this new change, it will just be on by default. So I don't really use Copilot in Power BI just because it's a premium feature. However, if you do use it, let me know in the comment section down below if this uh, feature streamlines your process. Visual calculations is still in preview, but it's now turned on by default. You can turn this off in the preview settings. And it's basically a feature that lets you create simple calculations on the visual level without needing to learn more about your semantic models. Along with this, you can also choose the data formats on how you want to show your visual calculations. You find this in the formatting pane because unlike the measures and columns, it doesn't have a dedicated ribbon to be able to update the formatting. So this will need to be updated on the formatting pane. Visual level format strings is something that I covered recently. And while it's still in preview, it's also turned on now by default. This gives you the ability to choose custom when you're choosing for a data type for your visual calculations. This lets you use format strings to customize how you show your visual calculations in your reports. Multi-factor authentication is now implemented when you're using Power BI within Teams. Power BI and Teams are seamlessly integrated if you didn't know yet. So you're able to do things like share your reports within Teams or even open these Power BI reports within Teams, so without leaving the Teams UI at all. And the addition of MFA just adds that extra security layer for your reports. You can now have multiple organization apps in the same workspace. Now, if you didn't know yet, organization apps are a way to package your reports for distribution. And previously, you could only have one app per workspace, which limits how you distribute your apps to your users, especially if you only have a handful of workspaces that you want to manage. If you wanted to create multiple apps before, you'd need to create multiple workspaces. There is this feature in the org apps called audiences, which lets you hide or show parts of the app to certain users. And now this ability of being able to create multiple org apps in the same workspace just gives you another way for you to distribute your reports to your users. You can now also use color pickers to change the theme of your org apps, which before you could only choose a handful of preset colors, but now you can choose the colors that best suits your business. You can now set your subscriptions to send on the last day of the month. This is a good addition to the subscription feature because typically reports are required at the end of the month. And now you don't really need to worry about months that are ending on the 30th, 31st or in leap years. This feature or this tick box will just make sure that your reports are sent at the end of the month. This month's feature updates covers the metrics layer, which is basically a new way to streamline your organization metrics. Now, don't get confused. It's not the same as the metrics feature that uh, currently exists in Power BI. And in fact, it's going to be renamed back to its original name, which is scorecards. The metrics layer is going to be a new item which leverages data from existing data sets with the idea of it being reused in other Power BI reports or even outside of Power BI. 
metric sets are slowly rolling out, so I'm looking forward to covering it once it's actually fully implemented and I can see how it works. So I can show you guys how you can start using it. You can now live edit semantic models in direct lake mode in Power BI Desktop. So don't really use a lot of the direct lake mode, but from what I understand, when you connect to semantic models using this option, you'll have the option to edit the semantic model. So it will let you do things like uh, create measures, columns, and relationships the same way that you're typically used to in a semantic model. NFC tag support is now available in the Power BI mobile app. So the NFC technology, if you don't know yet, is the same technology that powers the contactless features that you have when you're paying with your credit cards. And basically this feature is now available in Power BI, which is useful for people who work live in warehouses or shop floors to get certain information about certain items. So the idea is that you will have a warehouse with a bunch of these NFC tags that the users can tap into, which will send an information back to the Power BI report in the Power BI mobile app, which will give them information such as stock inventory or just more information about the item. So this type of usage is actually very familiar to what currently exists in the Power BI mobile app, which is scanning barcodes. And I did cover how to implement that in a separate video. So if you want to learn more about how that works and how you can start setting it up in a Power BI report, go check out that video. Lastly, the get data experience from the Power BI report builder is now generally available. So this is the feature that lets you get your data from various data sources into your paginated reports in the report builder, the same way that you would do in the typical Power BI experience. Now this feature is generally available, so you should be able to start using it if you're working with paginated reports. And that's really it for this video. So as usual, I didn't cover everything that was in this month's updates, only the ones that were pretty interesting to me. So if you want to learn more about everything that was released this month, I'll leave a link to the full blog post in the description box below. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at any of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.